Hello everyone, welcome to our lecture series on trigonometry. Trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that studies the relationships between um, the sides and angles of triangles. As it turns out, triangles have an unimaginably large number of uh, applications to real life. So studying triangles helps us uh, figure out a lot of things that we would not be able to figure out otherwise so uh, that's why trigonometry is one of the most important topics uh, that you can study in mathematics uh, side by side with algebra they form the very foundation of more advanced classes that you'll take uh, including calculus and uh, beyond the word trigonometry itself is a 16th century Latin derivative from the Greek words uh, for triangle, which is trigonon, and measure, which is metron. So together, they kind of formed the word trigonometry. In our first video, we'll start with studying angles. We'll be covering the following topics in this video. Some basic terminology when it comes to angles. Uh, then we'll go over what the degree measure of an angle is, uh, positive and negative angles. Uh, we will find out what we mean by those terms. Uh, and what is an angle in standard position? That's another uh, one of the concepts we'll study. And finally, what are coterminal angles? Let's start with some basic terminology. A lot of the concepts we'll study initially should be familiar to you from a geometry class uh, in high school. So uh, two distinct points uh, A and B in a plane determine a line uh, called line AB and we use this notation. We write AB with this double arrow on the top of it. So that means uh, line AB. Now, the word determine is a very strong word uh, and has uh, very important implications in mathematics. That means if you have two distinct points, first of all, notice that we don't take anything in, for granted in mathematics. Just because we say two points A and B may not uh, mean that they're different points. Maybe one person likes to call this point A and another person likes to call the same point B, right? In that case, they would not be distinct points. That's why we say distinct. So when you see distinct in mathematics, that means different, right? So now we can see here A and B are two different points. And what do we mean, uh, do we mean when we say they determine a line? We mean if you draw a line that goes through those two points, it will be the only line that will go through those two points, right? Any other line that would go through those two points would coincide with this line, which would basically uh, mean it would have the same equation. For all practical purposes, it would be the same line. Now, when we say line segment AB, that's a part of the line AB, right? So what part of it is it? Well, it's the part between the points A and B, right? And it also includes these two points, A and B. In the context of a line segment, we call those two points endpoints of the line segment. For the notation of uh, line segments, we use a bar above the, uh, word, the letter uh, AB. Or letters, I should say, AB written right next to each other. So. When you see this, the correct way of reading it is line segment AB. Of particular importance to us in trigonometry will be what's meant by ray AB. Ray AB is of course also part of line AB and it's the part that starts at A and continues through B, right? And notice that it also does include again the end point A. Uh, a ray would only have one end point on one end of it and in this case the end the only end point for ray AB would be point A. So now we're ready to define an angle. An angle is composed of two rays with a common end point. So 
Here are our two rays, ray AB and ray AC, right? And the common endpoint is A. Now, the ray AB and ray AC in this graph are called the sides of this angle uh, that you see uh, drawn here. And the common endpoint A is called the vertex of the angle. Now, there are different correct ways you can name this angle. One of them, if there is no extension on both sides of A, right, of either of those two rays, and therefore there is no ambiguity, is to just call it angle A. Another uh, correct way of calling this angle would be to call it angle B A C or you can call it angle C A B right now notice that when you're going to use three letters to name an angle you always want to make sure that the vertex is the middle letter uh, in the name that you create right now the another so one last way is of uh, naming it correctly is to just place a number or a letter inside here and you can use that uh, notation as well you can just so in this case you would just call it angle one and you would just write angle one like that now um, sometimes these the ray here a b or a c they have extensions on the other side of a as well like so let me do that better or like so right now when that is the case in this case in other words if there are either of those two action extensions you don't even have to have both if either one of those is present then you definitely do not want to use the single letter a no, uh, as the designation of this angle you do not want to use the name angle a if either of those two extensions are there in that case either use the single letter clearly depicted where it's supposed to be or use the three letter notations right and of course if you use the three letter notations you'll make sure that the vertex is the middle letter so what we mean by the measure of an angle is generated by the rotation of one of its sides about the vertex. So here is one side of this angle. We're going to take this other side and we're going to rotate it about the vertex. And the stationary side here, the one that's not rotating, we'll call the initial side of the angle. And the ray at the position at the end of the rotation we call the terminal side so this would be the terminal side of this particular angle that you see uh, in this uh, image here notice that the terminal side locations are much like real numbers uh, real number locations along the number line except that they're not located by moving straight to the left or straight to the right of a given reference point uh, namely zero but rather located by rotating either uh, in this direction counterclockwise which is considered the positive direction for angles or clockwise clockwise is actually considered to be the negative direction uh, for uh, angles uh, the size of a an angle will be the absolute value of the number indicating the rotation we'll get into that um, more clearly in the next uh, slide so the most common unit for measuring angles is the degree measure and uh, one full rotation of a ray about the vertex gives an angle whose measure is 360 degrees so when you start with the initial ray and uh, do a full rotation right until you come back to a that's considered to be 360 degrees right so of course half of it would be how many degrees well 360 divided by 2 right so it would be 180 right so 
there you can see an image of a protractor that you're probably familiar with so what is one degree that's just one 360th of one complete rotation so this is an actual size of a degree that you can see in this image in the using the red rays right here right so you can see one degree is extremely small um, measure for uh, an anger right so uh, it's very very um, easy to uh, overestimate the size of a degree a lot of students don't have a clear picture of what a degree is because they never actually look at it on a protractor but when you do you realize how small it is so when you go from here to here which makes what should look familiar to you a right angle that's exactly 90 degrees right so the name of an angle uh, well actually the name of the type of an angle has to do with its measure right if an angle has measure between 0 degrees and 90 degrees and notice these are strict inequalities that means measure strictly greater than 0 and strictly less than 90 then uh, degrees then we call that an acute angle if an angle has a measure that's exactly 90 degrees we call it a right angle if an angle has a measure which is somewhere between 90 and 180 so more than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees we call it an obtuse angle if it's uh, exactly 180 degrees we call it a straight angle and if it's somewhere between 180 and 360 we call it a reflex angle we will be mostly working with the first four types but we will encounter these from time to time as well next let's go ahead and look at some of the relationships between angles uh, two angles are called complementary angles if their measures add up to 90 degrees each of a pair of complementary angles is called a complement of the other angle it's a mutual relationship uh, so the complement of a 40 degree angle would be any angle measuring 50 degrees right and vice versa the complement of a 50 degree angle would be any angle measuring 40 degrees two angles are called supplementary angles if their measures add up to 180 degrees so each of a pair of such angles is called a supplement of the other angle so the supplement of a 40 degree angle would be any angle measuring 140 why because when you add 40 and 140 we get what 180 exactly what we're supposed to get when it comes to supplementary angles two angles are said to be adjacent angles if they have a common vertex and a common side so notice like right in here we have two angles they have a common vertex right and they also share that side and the same in here in this case they have a common vertex and they share this side right here so uh, notice that the way that uh, it is depicted here uh, that's a 90 degree angle or let's put it this way if you assume that that's a 90 degree angle then these pair of angles are more than just adjacent we say they are adjacent complementary angles because not only are they adjacent they also have measures that add up to 90 degrees so they're adjacent complementary angles now that's not a mandatory uh, um, state for example i could have any two angles that have a common vertex and a common side like those see see here angle uh, say one and angle two would be adjacent but since the um, they don't add up to a right angle right or 90 degrees their measures they're not 
complementary. So angle one and angle two depicted here would only be uh, adjacent angles. Same here. These two happen to be adjacent, but they also form a straight angle, which is 180 degrees, as we know. So they're not just supplementary angles, theta and gamma. They're also, uh, uh, I mean, they're not only adjacent, they're also supplementary. So we say they are a pair of adjacent supplementary angles. All right. Now we want to find the complement and supplement of a 67 degree angle. So notice that if you take, uh, let's say the measure of angle A is depicted by A degrees, right? We know that that plus the measure of the complement, which is going to measure C degrees, should be 90 degrees, right? So this tells me that uh, if I solve this simple equation for C, that C degrees will be 90 degrees minus A degrees, like that, right? So in other words, if you want to find the measure of the complement of any angle, here we're dealing with a very general angle A with measure A degrees, right? So all you have to do is subtract the measure of the angle from 90. So here we have 67, so the measure of the complement will be 90 minus 67. I'm dropping the degree notation for simplicity and we'll end up with 7 from 10 is 3 and 6 from 8 is 2. So we get 23, right? So the complement of a 67 degree angle will be a 23 degree angle. All right, so when it comes to the supplement, we know that if I take any angle and add it to its supplement, right? I'm leaving out the degree notations uh, for simplicity. I know that I should get 180, right? So if I solve this simple equation for S by moving A to the other side or subtracting A from both sides, we get 180 minus A, right? So this is always the relationship. If you know an, an angle, you can get the supplement by just subtracting the angle from 180. So in this case, for an angle measuring 67 degrees, we're gonna have 180 minus 67, which is seven from 10 is three, six from um, seven is one, so we get 113. So the supplement is a 130 degree angle okay so we can actually say any 130 13 degree angle etc okay simple all right so here in this next problem we're going to find the measure of each of the uh, two angles shown here uh, notice uh, we're not just interested in finding the value of x you understand we want to find the value of the two uh, the measures of the two angles right so but uh, of course given that these two angles are clearly uh, adjacent complementary angles we can see that there these two measures would add up to 90 degrees so a lot of times in uh, textbooks, etc., you may see these enclosed like that in parentheses with a degree measure on top for, um, you know, preciseness. So we have 26x plus 4 plus 14x plus 6 should equal to 90 and 
26 and 14 uh, add up to give us 40x plus and the 4 and the 6 of course combined to give us 10 equals 90 so we can go ahead and move the 10 to the other side where it becomes negative 10 so we get 90 minus 10 so we get 40x equals uh, 80 so x would be 2 80 divided by 40 remember mathematics becomes really simple when you do it inter when you learn it interactively in other words you don't ever want to watch a mathematics video like you're watching a movie or anything like that you have to have paper and pencil with you you have to be working through these problems with me that's how you're going to learn it and that's how it's going to be very very easy for you all right so now we have x but remember we actually don't want x we want to know what is 26x plus 4 and also what is 14x plus 6 so here if we just substitute 2 for x right we get 26 times 2 which of course is 52 plus 4 which is 56 and when we substitute 2 here we get 14 times 2 which is 28 plus 6 which is 34 right so one quick way you can see if you've done this correctly without making any kind of error is to go ahead and add those and as you know those two better add up to what to 90 right notice 6 and 4 is 10 so we have a 1 up here 1 and 5 is 6 plus 3 is 9 so they do indeed add up to 90 is a good indication that we did it correctly so the two um, the measures of the two angles are 34 degrees and 56 degrees okay so if you're going to show it on the figure that would be the one that's 56 degrees and this is the one that is 34 degrees as you start to kind of understand what's going on what you should do is when we get to a new, pro new problem and you can see oh I should be able to handle that then you do something very simple you pause the video you go work it out yourself and then you come back to check it to see if you did it correctly or not all right so again in many many books you'll see this notation as well all right notice that uh, we um, have two adjacent supplementary angles here right so we know that their measures should add up to 180 right degrees and here we get 9x equals 180 so x equals 180 divided by 9 which is 20 so of course if we make a quick table for ourselves we can see that 2 times 20 will give us 40 and 7 times 20 will give us 140 if we add those quickly we'll see that we do indeed get 180 which is what supplementary angles should add up to anyway well of course the me their measures right um, so here we get 2x so 40 degrees would be this angle and this angle here would be 140 degrees right in mathematics we make a big distinction between an angle such as a angle a depicted here and the measure of the angle right so the angle itself we just call angle a but if you want to talk about how many degrees that is we use the notation measure of angle a now different textbooks and different uh, instructors may at times become kind of lax about that and not make a big deal about the distinction but it is extremely important to understand the distinction because um, 
A itself or the angle A is a physical object, right? Whereas the measure is just a measurement associated with that physical object. For example, imagine you have a line segment whose uh, measure is, you know, basically two units, right? You wouldn't say that this line segment is two units, right? They're different things. One is a physical object. It's a line segment. The two units is the measure of that line segment, right? Or the length, which is what we refer to as. So in mathematics or in geometry in particular, it's very important to understand the difference between an object and a measurement associated with that object, correct? So make sure that you do understand that distinction. Sometimes when we're doing the algebra involved, we leave out the degree symbols, but when we do a final answer, we always want to make sure that we represent the final answers using the proper units. If you recall from our earlier discussion, an angle measuring one degree is quite a small angle as depicted here in red. But nevertheless, it certainly is large enough to where we can discuss parts of uh, one degree. So that's uh, what we'll be looking at next to see how we can look at parts of a, a degree. We break up a degree in exactly the same way that we break up an hour. As you know, one hour is equal to 60 minutes and one each minute is equal to 60 seconds, right? So we break up uh, degrees in exactly the same manner. We say one degree equals 60 minutes. Of course, here minutes are not units of time, but they're just basically depicting parts of a, a single degree. And in uh, symbols, we write one degree using that degree notation equals 60. We use the single prime notation to indicate minutes. And of course, if one degree is equal to 60 minutes, we can take this um, simple equation and solve it for minutes and we'll end up with one minute equals 1 60th of one degree. Notice that we have one degree equals 60 minutes and just doing simple algebra we can just go ahead and divide both sides by 60 and we end up with these canceling out leaving us one minute equals 1 60th of a degree and that's exactly what we are talking about over here on the right side. So symbolically, of course, we write one minute using the single prime notation equals one sixtieth of a degree using the degree notation. And uh, remember, we can take a minute and break itself into 60 seconds, which we can write symbolically in this way, one with a single prime notation, meaning one minute equals 60. And we use a double prime notation to indicate seconds. On this side, we solve this um, equation for seconds and we get one second equals 1 60th of a minute. You want to be comfortable with both um, directions, you know, going from degree to minutes or from minutes to degrees in other words from larger unit to smaller unit or vice versa smaller unit to larger unit in you know both cases with minutes and seconds as well so um, of course we get symbolically we write one second equals one sixtieth of a minute down here notice that one degree is 60 minutes and of course remember each minute is 60 seconds right so if we replace the minutes here with 60 seconds we get 60 times 60 which is 300 uh, 3600 seconds so one degree can be thought of as 60 minutes or equivalently 3600 seconds 
and in uh, symbols we can write it like this one degree equals 60 minutes equals 3600 seconds uh, going from small to large we can say one second is one sixtieth of a minute which is one three thousand six hundredth of a degree so um, there it is in uh, symbols one second equals one sixtieth of a minute equals one thirty six hundredths of a degree now we can take a, a measurement such as this 33 degrees 40 minutes 23 seconds and convert it into um, a decimal degree uh, notation uh, to the nearest thousands the way we'll approach something like that is like this we will um, simply start with 33 degrees 40 minutes 23 seconds so we can take care of all this with one addition we can say that's 33 degrees plus remember each um, minute is 1 60th of a degree so we can just say 40 over 60 degrees right plus and remember that each second is one three thousand six hundredths of a degree so we can put 23 over 3600 and that will turn into degrees as well okay so uh, all we have to do is handle this addition and we will be good to go so with that kind of a operation we can either do it by hand or it's okay to use technology on that as well pretty much anything involving simple arithmetic can be done on a calculator however anything requiring any kind of work such as this the work needs to be shown right unless a problem specifically says use a calculator to get to obtain an answer you have to show work okay so uh, let's take a look at what we end up with so we have 33 plus 40 over 60 plus uh, okay we had to get out of there first the fraction so we go plus 23 over 3600 and remember we want the answer to the nearest thousands correct so uh, notice that's the thousands digit itself so we have to look to the right that's a zero which is less than five so we're going to round uh, down which means we're just going to get three three point six seven three so of course because that's not an exact value we're going to put the double tilde notation which basically means approximately equal to 33.673 and of course that's in degrees so we went from notice that this notation which has degrees minutes seconds in it right uh, from that notation to just pure degree notation so for DMS when you see that that just means degrees minutes seconds all right so that's how you handle something like that whenever we do a problem that's not uh, something you're familiar with or that it's new for you when we finish simply take the problem write it on a piece of paper without the answer don't look at the answer see if you can go through the procedure on your own if you can do it without a glitch you should be in pretty good shape you're ready to move on to the next one or maybe make one up for yourself and do another one and uh, check it out okay and uh, that way before we move to a new problem you've basically made sure that you absorb a concept before you move to a new one okay in this problem we're gonna go the other way so we're gonna go from something that's given us in purely degrees form to DMS format 
Now, so in other words, we're going from a larger unit to smaller units. Remember, uh, if you look at the previous problem, to go from a smaller unit to a larger unit, such as from minutes to degrees, you divide, right? Uh, same with, uh, you know, when you want to go from seconds uh, to degrees, you divide. To go the other way from a larger uh, measure unit, measurement unit, to a smaller one, you're going to multiply. So we're going to start with 53.627 degrees. And we're going to say that's the same as 53 degrees, right? And what we can do is the, take the point 627 and multiply it by 60. And that's going to be in minutes, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at what we get for that. So we're going to take point six two seven, and we're going to multiply it by 60. So we get 37.62. So that's the same as 53 degrees, uh, 37.62 minutes. Let's make sure we wrote that correctly. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the 37 minutes, leave it alone, but the 0 0.62 minutes we're going to turn into seconds. So we're going to say that's the same as 0.62. And remember, we're going from minutes to seconds that means from a larger unit to a smaller unit so you know that that means we multiply so that's going to be in seconds okay so to go from minutes to seconds you multiply to go from seconds to minutes you divide and it's always by 60 whether you're multiplying or dividing right so we end up with 53 degrees 37 minutes now we're going to compute 0.62 times 60 and we get 37.2 so if we go ahead and uh, simplify that by rounding it to the nearest second we just get 37 seconds and notice there was a little bit of rounding so in here instead of equal we should say approximately equal to of course if they wanted us to find an exact uh, answer we could have used the equal sign we would have just simply said 53 degrees 37 minutes 37.2 seconds that's fine too there's nothing uh, keeping us from doing that see 37.2 was an exact answer there so we could have done that as well so now let's go ahead and take a look at how we would add or subtract uh, in um, DMS uh, notation so notice that we can just go ahead and line them up as we would uh, normally so we have 46 degrees 23 minutes we're going to add that to 23 degrees 50 minutes correct so now uh, we can just add the like items together so we're going to add the degrees together so 60 and then that gives us 9 so 69 degrees and that's going to give us 73 minutes, right? 
Now notice that's more than 60 minutes, right? So that means there's a whole minute in uh, a whole degree in here that we can take out and add to this side. So that's like saying 69 degrees. And let's go ahead and show the work here so you can understand it. And that's going to be 60 minutes plus 13 minutes, right? So notice that this part is just one degree, right? So if we put these two together, we end up with what? 70 degrees. And don't forget, we still have 13 minutes like that. Okay. And that's how you would add those two uh, measures. All right. So on this side, we're going to do a subtraction. We have 90 degrees minus 62 degrees, 15 minutes. So of course, this one only has degrees in it. This one has both. So we're going to have to make these look more similar if we're going to be able to do this. So we're going to take the 90 degrees and we're going to do a nice trick. We're going to go ahead and say that's the same as 89 degrees. And we're going to take one minute and turn it into, uh, I mean, one degree and turn it into minutes. So that's the same as 89 degrees, 60 minutes. You agree? So we just took the 90 degrees and we wrote it as 89 degrees and 60 minutes. So now we can subtract 62 degrees, 15 minutes from it quite easily. So 15 from 60, that's going to give us 45 minutes and 62 from 89, that'll give us 27 degrees. So the final answer will be 27 degrees, 45 minutes, like so. Okay. All right. So here we have a problem you should definitely be able to handle on your own. So I recommend that you go and try it before you come and compare your answer to mine. All right. So welcome back. Now you know that the complement of this angle is just going to be 90 degrees minus the angle itself, right? That goes for any angle, correct? Whether it's written in a simple format or in a more complex format like the DMS format. Okay, so this time we're going to use a similar trick to what we used in the last problem. So we're going to take the 90 degrees. We're going to write it as 89 degrees, 60 minutes. But since this one also has, let me separate those a little bit. 35 seconds. Since this one has uh, seconds in it as well, we're going to go one step uh, further and we're going to take one of those minutes and turn them into uh, seconds okay so remember 90 degrees is the same as that which is the same as 89 degrees 59 minutes 60 seconds so that's what we so remember that is exactly the same as 90 degrees. So we're going to take uh, that and use it instead of 90 in this subtraction. So we'll put 89 degrees, 59 minutes, 60 seconds, and then take away from it 26 degrees, 31 minutes, 35 seconds now we're just going to go through and subtract like items 35 from 60 that gives us 25 seconds 31 from uh, 59 that gives us 28 minutes 
and right here we get 63 degrees so the complement of a 26 degree 31 minute 35 second angle is going to be a 63 degree 28 minute 25 second angle you can easily check to see if you've done it correctly by taking this and adding it to that angle and making sure of course that you end up with what if you answered 90 you answered correctly so for the supplement again even if you didn't do this on your own you should be able to do the supplement on your own go try it on your own and then come back this is how this stuff becomes fun this is how you start making yourself smarter and uh, better at uh, logical tasks so make sure that you're being true to yourself all right so now we're going to find the supplement when you finish trying uh, trying it on your own the point is not making sure you get it 100% of correct 100% of the time the point is to make yourself try okay and you will get better and better with time so when you do come back and see if you did it correctly so now we know that the supplement is going to be 180 degrees minus the angle right well the angles measure 31 minutes 35 seconds so of course we know that 180 degrees can be written as 179 degrees we're going to take one degree and turn it into uh, minutes so that'll be 60 minutes and then again we're going to borrow one minute and turn it into seconds so that's going to be the same as 179 degrees 59 minutes and then 60 seconds notice that this number right right here this measurement is exactly the same as 180 degrees so in this subtraction we're going to use this instead of 180 degrees so we're going to write 179 degrees 59 um, minutes 60 seconds and subtract from it 26 degrees 31 minutes 35 seconds so again 30 from 60 is going to give us 25 seconds 31 from 59 is once again going to give us 28 minutes so here um, we get 25 seconds 30 from 60 that's 25 seconds I hope I said seconds if I said minutes I of course meant seconds I can't recall exactly but here we definitely get minutes and here when we subtract we're going to get degrees so that'll be three from seven is five so 153 degrees all right so the supplement of a 26 degree 31 minute 35 second angle is going to be a 153 degree 28 minute 25 second angle all right so make sure that you can handle that comfortably and then we'll proceed next we want to talk about a very important positioning for an angle and that's putting an angle into what's called a standard position an angle is said to be in standard position if its vertex 
is that the origin remember we're talking about the origin of the cartesian coordinate system so right there and um basically which is the point zero zero and its initial side is the positive x-axis remember the positive x-axis is a ray right it starts at the origin and then goes indefinitely toward the right so that's always going to be the initial side of any angle that is supposed to be in what's called standard position and of course remember you can take any angle right say for example you can see this angle even if it were somewhere else in space right uh, or on this plane we could have always taken it and put it into standard uh, position right here so um here's another angle that's obviously in uh, standard position so here we have a acute angle and here we have an obtuse angle both of which are uh, drawn in um, standard position now when we want to talk about an angle in standard position we usually call angles like a quadrant one angle or a quadrant two angle etc so what does that name depend on only on where the terminal side of the angle lies we always know the initial side is going to be part the positive x-axis for any angle in standard position so we use the terminal side to give it a name such as a quadrant one angle because that's the only thing that's going to be different about angles that are drawn in standard position where their terminal side happens to uh, end up so this would here would qualify as being called a quadrant two angle because its terminal side is in quadrant two now if an angle is in standard position and its terminal side doesn't actually lie in one of the four quadrants remember the four quadrants do not include the axes right the any of the axes so if the terminal side is actually happens to coincide with one of the axes such as the positive y axis here or the negative uh, x axis here or the negative y axis here um, or the positive uh, x axis here itself then we call this kind of an angle which of course you can see uh, one such possible angle is 90 degrees or 180 degrees or 270 degrees or 360 degrees right these kinds of angles whose um, initial and terminal sides are both uh, one of the four um, rays uh, associated with the Cartesian coordinate system either the positive x-axis the negative x x-axis positive y-axis or negative y-axis they're called quadrantal angles okay so when we refer to a quadrantal angle it's an angle that's going to look very much like one of these four angles now it may not be exactly these it may be an angle that's coterminal with these we'll get to that term in a minute we'll see what that means so what are coterminal angles basically two angles in standard position are said to be coterminal angles if in addition to having the same vertex and initial side which is the requirement for any angle to be uh, uh, basically called in a uh, standard position they also have the same terminal side now we know they're going to have the same vertex and initial side because they're both in standard position but now we're adding the new uh, requirement that they also have the same terminal side well you may be thinking well aren't they the same angle no not necessarily because look let's say you start right here on the positive x-axis and you rotate through 60 degrees you get that angle right but there's nothing to say that you have to stop there you could go one full circle after that right in other words you you're at 60 here you add another 360 to that you end up with what you end up with 420 degrees so in other words if you were to draw 
a 60 degree angle and a 420 degree angle of course these little arcs where we show the rotation are going to look different for the green you know for the 60 degree angle it's just going to be this small arc for the 420 you show a much longer arc right like that or spiral but nevertheless the the angles are going to look exactly the same aren't they as far as the initial and the terminal sides are concerned notice here are two other co-terminal angles one of them is a 110 degree angle right which you can see right here and then you can go around two more times right so you go to 110 you do one full circle and then go one full circle again notice what you'll end up with you'll end up with 830 degrees so because you're just adding two full circles each full circle measuring what 360 degrees so a 110 degree angle and a 800 30 degree angle will have exactly the same initial side and terminal side and of course what will look different about them is are these little arcs we use to indicate the type of rotation required to uh, get to the terminal side so note that if we start with any angle in standard position and rotate full circles, that means multiples of 360, 360 degrees, either counterclockwise, which is in the positive direction, it means add multiples of 360, or clockwise, which is in the negative uh, direction as far as angles are concerned. So which means subtracting multiples of 360 degrees then you will always end up with a new angle that's going to be coterminal with the angle you started with, right? This obviously means that given any angle, we can find infinitely many other angles that are coterminal with it. It's a really important thing to understand. And we'll visit uh, the concept again later in, in the course. Now, here we're finding five positive and five negative angles that are coterminal with a 60 degree angle in standard position. So notice for the positive ones, all we have to do is we start with 60, right? We go, we add one full circle to it, right? One full revolution, and that's 360. So we end up with what? 420. We start with 60 again, then go two uh, full uh, you know revolutions and end up at the same terminal side and that'll be 780 degrees and then we continue that with three uh, cycles or four uh, full revolutions or five full revolutions so notice these angles right here if you were to graph them they would be exactly coterminal with um, 60. let's take a, a quick look at a visual look at that all right, so here's a nice little uh, website on the internet. If you just type in angle meter in Google, it'll come up. So notice there's a 60 uh, degree angle. So if we uh, draw a 420 degree angle, right? If we change the 60 to 420, we should end up in the same location. Notice that we did exactly that, right? Or if we change that to uh, 780, again same thing 1140 of course yeah this uh, unfortunate thing is i haven't found a really good uh site which would show us the you know rotational um cycles and maybe one of you is a good programmer and will uh, crank that out i i'm not a programmer myself but uh shouldn't be that difficult i would think for a programmer to do so let's see 1500 see again so you see all these angles when you graph them they're going to look exactly the same why because they're coterminal and of course if we were seeing the rotations then uh, you would see the only thing that's different about them okay and it's the same thing with negative ones. With negative ones, just start subtracting multiples of 360 from 60. So 60 minus one full revolution, that'll bring you here. 
that's going to be negative uh, 300 degrees will be exactly the same as uh, 60 degrees itself so um, if you um, because when you're doing negative uh, let me see if this site can handle negatives yeah see it does so because that means remember negative means you start here you start moving this way right so that's going to be negative 90 negative 180 negative 270 and then another 30 degrees will bring you to negative 300 right so notice that this what's left here is another 60 degrees right so that's how negative 300 degrees and 60 degrees end up in exactly the same location as far as the terminal side is concerned all right so again all these other angles by going two revolutions three four or five they're going to give us coterminal angles with a 60 degree angle in standard position of course all right, so here we want to find an angle of the least positive measure coterminal with an angle of 29, 20. Now, we could sit there and we could do, you know, this. We could just say, okay, let's start with, um, let me clear some of this stuff. Okay, so we can say, okay, let's start with 29, 20 and take away one full circle and uh, we end up with that okay there is a coterminal angle oh we can but they want the least positive measure so we can just keep subtracting 360s till we end up with an answer which is not positive anymore right but that's not very efficient is it so here's a more efficient approach first what we're going to do is we're going to see how many 360s we can fit inside that right so we're going to take 2920 and we're going to divide it by 360. We see that slightly over 8 uh, 360 degrees are hidden inside 2920. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start with 2920 and we're going to take away 8. 360 degrees see this is very clever because we don't have to sit there and keep subtracting like we were before so now we're just going to go 29 20 minus 8 times 360 and we get 40 so that is the small the least positive measure angle that is coterminal with a 2920 angle. Okay, so um, that's that. Very easy and very clever. All right, you have to be slightly more careful when you're dealing with a negative uh, measure given to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take do, do have a similar approach we're going to take negative 2920 and divide it we could have just done 2920 in all honesty it doesn't make much difference but if i add just eight 360s to this i'm still going to end up with a negative answer in fact you know what it'll be it'll be negative 40 watch if you take negative 29, 20, because we want the largest negative measure, right? We're going to add 8 times 360, and we get negative 40. Now, if, if we are looking indeed for the largest negative measure, then this is what exactly we would want to do. We would want to add eight 360s to it. Sometimes they'll also ask you for the least positive measure as they are doing here. 
So this is going to take a two prong approach, right? So we're going to first take negative 29, 20, add eight 360s to it. That'll bring us to negative 40 degrees. But if I were doing this and they weren't asking me the first question and they were only asking for the second part, the least positive, I would have immediately known that I need to go more than eight if I'm going to end up with a positive answer. I would have done one more than that. So I would have done nine, right? But right now I know that negative 40 degrees is coterminal with that. So all I have to do if I want to get the least positive measure angle is take the negative 40 and add another 360 to it, right? So this is the first the answer to the first part, the largest negative uh, measure angle that has that is coterminal with negative 29 20 and this one which is of course 320 degrees this is the least positive measure angle which is coterminal with negative 29 20. all right so make sure you understand that before we proceed okay so here's a question having to do with clocks we want to know what is the measure of the smaller angle formed by the hands of a clock at 4 p.m. Of course, we say the smaller angle because you see there's one angle here and there's a larger one here. Uh, of course, if you're exactly, say, at 6 p.m. or at uh, noon, for instance, there will only be one angle on either side. But uh, at all other times, you're going to have a smaller angle and a larger angle, right? So um, basically, uh, of course, it could be 12 p.m. or a.m. and 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. So there are four times at which we wouldn't have a different angle sizes, but at other times we would, right? So the smaller one is this one. So remember, if you basically look at a uh, clock, it takes a circle, which is we know, as we know, is 360 degrees, takes it and breaks it up into these equal angles. How many of them? 12 of them. So we take 360 degrees and divide it by 12 and we get 30 degrees. So each hour, right, corresponds to 30 degrees, right? So basically we can see there is one, two, three, and four, right? So one, two, three, four. So four of those 30s will give us what 120 degrees so what's the angle formed between the two hands of the clock at 4 p.m exactly 120 degrees for our last uh, example in this lecture we're going to look at a kind of generalization that uh, we need to be comfortable with in a trigonometry class uh, if you recall, when we discussed coterminal angles, we said given any angle, we should be able to find infinitely many um, other angles that are coterminal with it. Uh, you know, some by going uh, uh, in a counterclockwise fashion uh, uh, at multiples of 360 degrees, and some going in a, a clockwise fashion. So. Um, of course, uh, remember that the counterclockwise is the positive direction and clockwise is the negative direction when angles uh, are concerned. So the question is, what if we're asked to find an expression that generates all the angles that are coterminal with a given angle, in this particular case, a 60 degree angle? So for that, remember, we've already seen 10 of those in an example. Let's go and take a look at that real quickly. If you recall, the, in this example, we already saw 10 angles that are coterminal with um, 60 uh, degree angle, which is uh, drawn in standard position. So in order to generate an expression for all of them, what we're going to do is we're going to start with um, our 60 degree angle, and then we're going to add multiples of 360 to it so 
The way we do that is by writing plus 360 degrees and then usually some letter such as N. And then here we need to be um, specific about what N can be. So here we say for N belonging to this notation here, it's the Greek letter epsilon. And when you write it, it means belonging to a particular set that you're going to write after that. Here, the set is the set of integers. Now, um, if you recall, the set of integers are basically all the whole numbers and their opposites. So we usually write them like this. Okay, so Notice we have all the whole numbers here starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, and then all their opposites, right? Um, 0, of course, is its own opposite. Now, notice that, if, for example, if we start substituting some of these non-negative ones, for example, we get 60 degrees plus 360 degrees times 0. Well, this is just 0, right? so we end up with just 60 degrees so if we do 60 degrees plus 360 degrees times 1 we end up with um, 420 degrees again we've seen some of these numbers before and on and on and on right and uh, of course how do we get those where we were subtracting multiples of 360 by using these negative integers so for example, 60 degrees plus 360 degrees times negative 2, that'll be like going two times in the negative direction, two full circles, right? And we've also seen that, uh, and we can go ahead and compute it. And we're just going to do 60 minus basically 720, right? So we get negative 660. So, but this expression notice captures them all, right? But you do have to be specific about the values of N when you create an expression such as that in trigonometry. All right, so that should be a good start for the term. Uh, you wanna make sure that you do all your assignments on the day that they're assigned and do not let them pile up because things uh, get out of control very quickly when you let um, assignments pile up so but as long as you do them on a daily basis the term should go very smoothly all right so um, that should do it for this video stay safe till our next meeting